I think it's a program to reduce overall complication and improve the quality of life of patients. It goes way beyond improving mortality. And I think in cardiac surgery, we have really um, conquered mortality. I don't mean mortality zero, it can never be zero. But uh, in the course of the conference, uh, it, in the last two days, we've learned that both in America uh, and Europe, the mortality for cardiac surgery is between one and a half and three percent. But we hadn't really addressed morbidity and complications and quality of life. And I think ERAS really improves that. I think still we need to make quite a bit of effort because first of all a lot of people think it is something different it isn't many of the practices are ingrained in the existing uh, perioperative care of our patients but this is concentrating the minds and concentrating the various aspects of an ERAS bundle and making sure that every patient can benefit from it so I think we have a lot to um, if you like advertise and teach uh, and we hope that we're able to do that. I think it's really important because um, it affects uh, both neurological recovery, not necessarily um, transient ischemic attack or stroke, but general uh, psychological well-being and reduction of delirium. It also affects uh, kidney function after surgery, which can increase a huge amount of morbidity and mortality. So I think it's really important. Generally, including myself, I'm to be blamed for during cardiac surgery, we don't actually, when we are on bypass, we don't pay much attention to the perfusion pressure or uh, if you like flow and so on. So I think working with our perfusionists and aesthetists, that's something we really need to pay attention. Another way of improving and measuring, I think, perfusion is by using um, a near-infrared spectroscopy, which essentially measures the, uh, if you like, oxygenation to the brain, but it also can be used as an um, end or uh, as a surrogate for other end organs, like the kidneys. So it's very important, I think, recognition. Uh, sorry, I just want to add something. I think with hypertension, both during bypass and after surgery, we always lag behind. We always watch it for a good few hours and then we suddenly realize oh, the blood pressure has been low and the measures we've taken hasn't helped. So I think a um, little bit predicting it uh, can be, is helpful. I've become recently familiar, for instance, with the HPI uh, instrumentation and methodology of Edwards through my anesthetic colleagues, really, because I've had to learn it from them. And I think it's very important in conjunction with the other clinical measures. I think it's really important. I think uh, I can give you exact information, at least from the UK and particularly London. I think it's been affected significantly. Up to 50%, 40-50% uh, of the operation get cancelled just now on the day of surgery. I, I, either due to lack of intensive care, beds or nurses, which it doesn't make sense to people who don't work in the UK. Because last time I told an American colleague there are no beds, he said, well, what's the problem? Go and buy some. So it means that we can't actually staff those beds. Or at the moment we have, I would say, physical problem with bed space on our intensive cares. And many nurses uh, have left intensive care uh, following the pandemic and they haven't returned to work or in that at least in the capacity so I think it has really been affected badly. I don't think they can replace the nurses but what we can do is that to utilize our intensive care beds far more effectively and that's where the technology can help to make sure our patients recover better, to make sure that we don't sit on, if you like, suboptimal hemodynamics, we end up on multiple inotropes, which would treble, quadruple the length of stay. So we can make much better use of our ICU beds with the help of technology.